with Oscar season fast approaching, one film is already generating a great deal of buzz. Boys Don't Cry follows the true story of 21-year-old Tina Brandon, who wanted to live life as a boy, but found a tragic end. Here is the film's trailer. A true story of hope. Make sure you get out. Fear. Are you or are you not? And the courage it takes to be yourself. Well, nothing can go wrong if we're together. That dream I had, we're on the highway together. We can still do it. Boys don't cry. Joining me now, director Kimberly Pierce, who is making her feature film debut. And the film star, Hilary Swank. I am pleased to have them here to talk about this, as I said, much discussed film. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Great it's nice to, to be here. here. Uh, tell me about the film, and then we'll talk about the response to the film. But, but what's the story here, and why are you so, um, why did you decide this was a story worth putting on film? Sure. Um, you know, I was uh, always interested in women who had passed as men who were like pirates and adventurers, sailors, like kind of throughout time. And uh, I was writing a script on another person who passed as a man, and I probed into it and found out that this woman actually was doing it to survive. And I was more interested in stories of identity. So uh, I picked up The Village Voice in April of 1994, and I just read this extraordinary story, you know, The Life and Death of Brandon Tina. And that's the story of a girl who dressed up as a boy and went out, you know, asked girls out, basically was looking for love and acceptance and found it. And it came to a tragic end, but uh, kind of in the course of it, she, as a boy, ended up finding kind of her deeper, truer sense of herself. What is it about that kind of story that you think makes it so compelling for you? I fell in love with Brandon. I mean, here was a girl, you know, living in a trailer park, didn't have much money, didn't have any role models. She took the most enormous imaginative leap that, like, a person can take. You know, put a cowboy hat on, put a sock in her pants, went out, you know, and lived her dream. Started asking girls out. I mean, really... Went, you know, found love on the terms that no, she. But my my question is that you me. you were looking for a story like that. Yeah. You know about a woman who wanted to pass as a man. What is it about that that's so interesting to you? I probably that, on the on the deepest level, you know, I was a tomboy as a kid. Yeah. You know, you're doing all kinds of things which uh, seem natural to you. You're swinging from trees, breaking conch shells open with baseball bats, and you know somebody says, you know, start acting like a girl, and you just say. Well, what's that? Yeah. You know. Why do you think this has resonated with an audience so that there's so much talk about it and such a, a critical appreciation? Um, my feeling is is that it's a story that everyone can relate to, and I think that people are finding something within Brandon that's within themselves. And you know, um, a lot of people say, well, you know, he's transgendered or he's gay, you know, but you're not, so. What did you find uh, within Brandon to, to be able to play and relate to? And um, for me, that was uh, someone, Brandon was someone who followed his dream, who had the courage to really be himself and to not conform to what society want, wanted him or her to be. And um, that's an inspiration to me. And I hope that I can live my life as fully as Brandon lived his life in his 21 years. Uh, and you know, having the courage to be myself, yeah, willing and, to take chances to be yourself. That's right. What's the hardest thing about putting that character on the screen? Um, I think the hardest thing for me was I. It's I, I've always really thought about being honest to the story and telling a story that Brandon would be proud of. And it's hard, you know, when you're when you're just doing a story that is just made up and just fiction. It's, you know, you have a lot of leeway and you have a lot of creativity. But with this movie, you know, these are real people and this was someone's life. And so you feel a really um, strong uh, just pull yeah. to, to be able to do it honestly. And um, so that, was, that, that wasn't the hard, I mean, it wasn't hard to do that. It was just, it took a lot of effort to do the research and to, the, to do the work and to actually pass as a boy. Because when I got this role, um, I didn't want to do it unless I could pass as a boy. So part of our work, uh, the transformation process for me, was four weeks of living my Did life Did you know you could boy. do it? Or you had to find out? I had to find out. I mean, what I are you smiling for again? I'm smiling because it took three years to find her. Uh, actually, when you, she was talking, the thing that popped in my mind was why you, how hard was it to find the right Oh, near impossible. There was no guarantee that the world was going to give us another version of Brandon. We needed a girl who could pass as much on screen as Brandon passed, and a girl who had the charisma that Brandon had to open people up. And I looked at probably a thousand girls over three years, and nobody had it. 
I looked at, you know, butch lesbians and transsexuals who in real life could pass, mm -hmm. but on screen couldn't pass. Um, none of the agents would send actors in in 96 when I first started crewing up. Um, and then in 98, I got flooded with girls, and none of them had any idea what it was to be a boy. So there was a certain physical type that I was looking but for. But did Hillary have any idea what it was to be a boy? She had Brandon's spirit inside of her. Yeah. She know, must have, it, because, you know, and, and, and she had the great physical traits, yeah, sure. you know, that I hadn't seen in anybody else, and well, the smile. But the great physical traits are what? Uh, uh, boy jaw, yeah, uh, boy say, ears, uh, boy eyes, boy forehead. <laughs> yeah, she's got a beautiful, <laughs> strong... Look at that face, it's yeah. strong. Yeah. So you knew that it could pass I, well, on screen. I, I kind of knew because she came in with a cowboy hat on. And, it's a uh, very fascinating, <laughs> fac fascinating story of how it all came about. What, what's the story? Um, I went in. I knew, I mean, you have to go in in character. You know, it's their first impression. I can't go in being a girl with my long hair that was down to here and say, you know, I can really be a yeah. boy, I promise. <laughs> wink, wink, you know, girly. Yeah. So I, um, Which I saw yeah. with other girls. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. So um, I wore my husband's clothes. I'm married. I wore yeah. my husband's clothes. I strapped and packed. That's what I call it, strapping my breast and right. uh, putting a sock in my pants. Uh, I had long hair, like I said, and I bought a cowboy hat at a secondhand store for a dollar, tucked all my hair up in it, um, used. I mean, I was just scratching the surface of what I wanted to do if I got the role to play Brandon, because obviously I wasn't going to be able to do all that work just for an audition. But the voice, you know, I tried to use a different the voice that, that, that I eventually ended up using, but I mean, I obviously worked on it a lot more once I got the role. But, you know, the, using a lower register, using an accent. Um, Roll tape. Here is a scene uh, in which uh, Lana uh, told Brandon, the character, uh, that she had a dream about him. Here it is. Had a dream about you last night. You did? What happened? Ow! Come on, tell me the dream. Someone walked me home last night. I think it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Lana, it's time to go to work. When you watch it, what do you see? Um, I see a movie that I'm very proud of. I think we definitely captured everything that, that I was looking to capture in the movie. I think the performances all across the board were absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the cinematography is beautiful. I think it's an amazing, amazing directorial debut for Kim. I can't believe it's her first movie. I'm really proud of it. I am really, really proud of this movie. And it does for you? Um, I mean, it, it obviously brings attention to you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, it's definitely changed things in my career. I'm definitely getting a newfound respect, which is really um, humbling and uh, mm -hmm. makes me feel really good. Thank you both for coming. Uh, it opens. It opened in limited release on October 23rd. It goes, as they say, wide on November 12th, is that a, yeah. as far as you know, that's correct. As far as I know, <laughs> as they figure it out. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. You know, this has been how many years, A Labor of Love for you? Uh, five and a half years. Five and a half, and you spent what? A, 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 a year. year. Yeah, a it's year. been a year oh. now, we were filming. Yeah, okay. a year. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you love films, uh, you will love not only the story, but the story behind the story and the making of film and the film itself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.